Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to another thrilling episode of Techspert Weekly and hopefully this week I'll be sounding a little bit less ass or at least just sort of standard levels of assness just checking the audio that all seems fine touch wood. I've been having a good old fiddle with the audio to so try and get those levels just right so yeah so fingers crossed all is good apologies again for the absolute cluster f that was last week's episodes and to think that some commenters think I know absolutely nothing about tech. Huh. Anyway I haven't bothered to think of a clever intro or anything we've actually got quite a lot of stuff to cover this week so as your mum said to me last night why don't we just bang on tech expert weekly uh, right then, first up, in news that's about as shocking as a Victorian porno flick, Google has decided to take a metaphorical flamethrower to its in-house Google Stadia development team. So don't expect any Stadia game exclusives anytime soon. Or indeed, ever. And have we actually decided exactly how you pronounce Stadia yet as well? I say Stadia, I've heard Stadia. Stadia sounds a bit, ooh, upper crust posh -o. Just one of many burning questions I have about Stadia. Stadia, Stadia, however you pronounce it, hasn't exactly been smothered with love by Google since it first hit the public space last year. If this was Google's kid, it would be the 15-year-old delinquent son who got shipped off to live with a distant aunt after setting fire to the dog. Actually, that is really harsh on Stadia, which was a perfectly promising platform despite Google's apparent complete lack of shits to give. It could still be a winner to compete with other cloud streaming services, but chances are it's going to be taken out to sea in a burlap sack and quietly disappeared, soprano style. It definitely does make me kind of sad because I can get behind the whole cloud streaming thing. GeForce Now from Nvidia is absolutely fantastic and I quite like the Microsoft version as well where you can stream Xbox Game Pass games to your smartphone. I did a full video on that so go check it out. The Sims, of course, still a thing in 2021. Good news if you like locking virtual characters in a room and then watching them soil themselves and slowly go insane. Who doesn't? So what is going to happen to Stadia? Well, leave your predictions down below, definitely. Now next on the list, we've seen some slightly bonkers advancements when it comes to wireless charging tech on smartphones in recent times, mostly thanks to the likes of Oppo with its clever dual battery technology. And of course, good old Xiaomi, who recently slapped 50 watt wireless charging on its fresh new Xiaomi Mi 11 flagship phone. But right now, wireless charging still requires you to lovingly and tenderly place your smartphone on a wireless charging pad, which isn't particularly clever or sexy. And that's where those Xiaomi boffins once again come into the picture with their clever new but slightly clunkily titled Mi Air Charge Tech. The Mi Air Charge base station can beam precious electricity to your grateful blower over distances up to a few meters. So feasibly, your portable pal could power back up while it's still stuffed inside of your pocket. Let's just hope there's no troublesome static buildup that makes your crotchal region all tingly at the same time. Or actually, that's... Hmm. The Mi Air Charge base station packs a rather impressive 144 individual antennas which perform this sci-fi wizardry. And I'm really sure that the 5G causes COVID and cancer of the cock brigade will be absolutely overjoyed when they hear all about this one. I mean, I've got to admit, the thought of a big box packed with 144 antennas beaming out electricity just a few feet away from you does kind of make my ball sack shrink up into my body. And Xiaomi hasn't exactly said when the Mi Air Charge tech will be available to consumers and in its current state it is kind of limited technology too. We're talking a rather piddly 5 watts trickle charge here but if it's powering up your phone whenever you're at home it doesn't really bloody matter does it? So stop mourning. All right Christ you bloody people never happy. Now pretty quiet one on the smartphone launches this week but we did see HMD Global whip out its fresh new Nokia 1.4. It's a £90 budget handset that boasts a robust build so you can hand it off to your dumb dumb kids without worrying about them breaking it in a single afternoon. Fun and functionality for the whole family is how HMD is billing the Nokia 1.4 and certainly that 6.51 inch HD plus screen could be used for some fun times all round. For your cash you get an Android Go handset with Android 10 out of the box but guarantees of Android 11 soon plus three years of security updates. And there's a dual lens camera with a, ah, oh, god damn it, a motherfucking macro lens. Of course, of course there is. Seriously, when is it ever gonna end? Why not just stab a knife directly into my heart, you absolute monsters? And HMD reckons you'll enjoy two days of battery life from the Nokia 1.4, as long as you don't spend all day in lockdown watching Scandinavian scat porn on it. Oh wait, did I say Scandinavian scat porn? <laughs> oh, just a slip of the tongue. What I meant to say was extreme hentai. A few other bits of tech-related news this week, including good old Bezos, of course, standing down as the CEO of Amazon. A lot of people seem really shocked about this, but of course he is. He's literally got enough money now to build his very own Scrooge McDuck vault. And surely that's the end game for anyone on this miserable little planet. Enjoy retirement, Jeffy boy.
you rich prick. And also, impending launch alert, Huawei is going to be revealing its fresh new Mate X2 foldable phone on January the 22nd. More sexy hardware, no doubt, but what about the software? That's very intriguing indeed. Whoa -ha. Stay tuned for more on all that shit. And that's about all of the news that I can stomach this week, so it's time to drop trout, touch your toes, and think of merry old England as we dive face first into that most favoured of segments, viewer comments. Whoop, boop, 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 boop. Viewer comments. <laughs> right, so first comment this week comes from James. Jim says, your audio wasn't that bad. I recorded a well-known actor from her wardrobe this week and it sounded trash and I'm a professional sound engineer. Hang on, as in you were in her wardrobe? Hang on, I'm kind of confused. Should I call the police? Not really sure. Uh, next up, Joseph says, you are awesome and I watched your video while drinking. Uh, yeah, top lad, that is the recommended strategy for getting through an episode of Textbook Weekly and also the sole reason you think I'm awesome. Uh, Matt says, money to pay the bills. Chris, we know you just buy alcohol. Yeah, I mean, that's what I meant, the alcohol bills. You know, who needs heating when you've got a 24-pack of skull? Uh, next up, David says, Techspert, the missing link between life on Earth and educational children's TV. Can you imagine people sitting their kids in front of uh, an episode of Techspert Weekly for their educational lessons? Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, though, I, would just, I just would not survive as a children's TV presenter. If that Jason fella came up to me with a cream pie, I'd kick him right in the cock and I'd tell him and that Robbie Robot to go get f***. Although I suppose we could do a boozy version of number blocks where basically every beer can we finish off, we stack it up one on top of the other and then you've got to count how many beer cans we've got through, how many we have remaining, very important. How many cans of beer does it take for daddy to piss his pants and fall face down on the floor? Oops, there he goes again, Jessica. Oh dear. Yeah, I think this could work. I might pitch that to the BBC. Uh, next comment comes from uh, Vol Volodymyr. Apologies as ever if I completely fannied up the pronunciation of your name. Uh, he says, I hoped S in motor well, the Edge S would stand for small, but no, it's freaking humongous. Yeah, the Moto Edge sizable, I guess, is probably more likely sign of the times, mate. I mean, Jesus Christ. The amount of phones that Motorola spaffs out, you think they'd at least do one mini or compact or something. But the Moto Edge S does look like a decent smartphone. If it comes out over here in the UK for, you know, a respectable mid-range sort of price, then it could be a good bit of competition for, you know, the likes of the OnePluses, things like that. And apparently, I think I saw a headline earlier today that they've sold like 10,000 units within seconds of it going on sale or something crazy. So, fingers crossed, you know, it does as well, it makes it over here, and we get even more Motorola phones to review. And actually, on that very subject, the next comment from Paul is uh, two things guaranteed after the apocalypse cockroaches survive, and Motorola still releasing smartphones. I think you might have hit the nail right on the freaking head there. So, guys, basically, at that point, they'll be producing phones for cockroaches. Let's just hope the cockroaches are mutated into big seven foot buggers with massive hands. And next up, Graham says they've banned all booze in South Africa. Again? Jesus Christ, man. Uh, so I'm going in sober, wish me luck. Luck, you do not need luck where you're going, mate. You need a friggin' hip flask filled with the strongest single malt you can find. All right, she looks like, according to the BBC, they've lifted the ban now, so good. I'm pleased for you, mate, because, come on, I mean, lockdown is miserable enough without having, you know, being booze-deprived as well. That's kind of like cutting someone's arms and legs off and sticking a gag on them. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, then sticking them in front of a TV showing a 24-hour Mrs. Brown's Boys marathon. Uh, next up, if I buy you a Sony Alpha One camera and an Xperia Pro, will you live stream Textbook Weekly while drinking? Surely it's the content that 2021 deserves. I mean, I'm not even sure that's the content that a serial killer deserves, to be honest, but 2021's shaping up to be pretty cack, so potentially. If you do want to see me talking bollocks live while drinking, then I am going to be on the Sam and Matt Across the Pondcast uh, podcast this Sunday. Let's go check that out. I'll try and remember to stick a link down in the description, otherwise you'll find it on Twitch and uh, good old YouTube. And yeah, I'm definitely going to try and get some more live streams on the go right here on Techspert throughout the year as well, so stay tuned for all of that good shiz. Uh, but yeah, no, if you want to buy me a Sony Alpha 1 camera, uh, I definitely would not turn that down. Definitely any gift sent to the address below. Uh, next up, Marius says, will you be covering the development of the new BlackBerry smartphone story? Oh yes, definitely, very much so. I've been very interested in the BlackBerry world ever since they basically ditched the god-awful BlackBerry OS and everything and started going with Android, using their own launcher to add in some of the best features. I think it's a really nice blend. Uh, definitely check out the BlackBerry launcher if you haven't already. And I really like the BlackBerry Priv handset from well back in the day. That was when I was reviewing it for Mobile Choice, was it? It was a long, long time ago now. Um, so yeah, so hopefully they can improve on that uh, and just give it a less toilety name as well. Next up, Master G says, no, no, no. Morrissey albums still have words and ideas, plenty of more worthwhile semi-literate targets 
out there. I mean, yes, technically there are worse things than Morrissey out there. But seriously, every time I hear one of the one of his songs, this is what I'm actually hearing. Oh, look at me. I'm so very, very, very sad now. My skinny jeans have cut off all circulation to my nutsack. And my hair's still crap. Basically. Anyway, uh, next up, Alistair says, new segment alert. Which celebrities can we get Uncle Spurt to impersonate this week? Well, uh, there's another one for the crap celebrity impersonation bank. I mean, you can throw names and stuff at me if you want, but I mean, let's face it, I can't do accents. I can't, you know, do impressions of any sort of, Basically, I've got no talent, is what I'm saying here. If you haven't realized this after how many episodes? 47, 48? Then there's no hope for any of us. Uh, and speaking of segments that should have been drowned at bloody birth, you buggers have been at it once again, haven't you, with the Baldy Z list celebrities. Uh, so regrettably, for the first time in 2021, and undoubtedly not the last time, I just roll a goddamn mother flicking jingle. Which crap celebrity do I look like this week? So we had a few suggestions last week. Uh, some of them we've already had, including good old Louis Spence. We've had him so often that he's even in the bloody title sequence. Uh, Alistair McGowan doing an impression of David Beckham during his slaphead phrase. Well, we've had Alistair McGowan before, but not that specific Alistair McGowan, so I guess that kind of counts. Oliver says, you look kind of like a skinnier version of Brian Glover. Love it. Mr. Rottweiler himself. I mean, to be fair, that lad could probably eat three of me for breakfast, but uh, yeah, I see where you're going with that one. Uh, Steve Trinquan said, you look like Zach from Jerry Rig Everything, but instead of being fit, you've amassed a taste for the drink. Yeah, fair play. I can't really argue with that. I'm bald and I don't really like lifting very much unless it's lifting beers to my face. Am I right? Uh, Lizard Limited says, am I the only one who thinks you look a bit like Wallace from Wallace and Gromit? Yeah, the segment's done. On a completely different topic, Steve says, uh, Jimmy's on the quayside was the place to go for free booze by spinning uh, the wheel. Jimmy's with a Z at the end. It sounds like the kind of classy name that this establishment that I'm thinking of would have, so that's, that does sound legit. Uh, next up, Artie Fart 54 Dave, also on the subject of uh, drinking in uh, Newcastle, says, I used to go in Newcastle about 50 years ago, took Cedar Princess, among others. Oh, man, now that brings back some memories, some very very hazy memories. Now for anyone who doesn't know and hasn't experienced the joys of the Tuxedo Princess, this was a nightclub in Newcastle. We used to lovingly call it The Boat because it was, you know, it was a boat. And sadly, it's now sailed off into the sunset. Uh, we used to love going there. The highlight was definitely the revolving dance floor inside, uh, which was just as fun as it sounds, especially after all of those triple shots that we were talking about last week. It always seemed like a good idea at the time. You would get on the thing and you'd be spinning around and then you'd start to feel a little bit sick because of the dancing and the constant rotation. But then of course, getting off was always lots of fun as well because of course your mobility is a little bit all over the place. You couldn't just step off because that would just end in disaster every time. That would be like you on your ass, drink all over you. So you basically would end up feeling like Tom Cruise getting ready to like jump off the back of a moving train or something like that. You'd have to sort of get the right poise. You'd have to brace yourself, wait for exactly the right moment and then just go for it. And trust me, you really did not want to bugger up that dismount because if you timed it badly, you would end up face first in some big lad's man tits. But as I say, the tuxedo Princess has suddenly sealed off uh, down the Tyne, uh, no longer with us, which is, yes, at times it's happy memories there. I think they had a bit of trouble actually getting it to uh, to seal away because there was just a mountain of Smirnoff ice bottles kind of clogging up the area of the river around it. The next comment, uh, Ardy says, it's my birthday today. Happy freaking birthday, Ardy. Uh, and he continues, which phone should I buy with a budget of 250 quid? Got that good money from Gran, good stuff. Uh, looking for a good game and 5G smartphone. Well, the Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite, basically. Job done. And, uh, oh, <laughs> I've again gone massively over time, so better make this the last one again. Uh, final comment. Craig says, come on, guys, let's get Uncle Spurt up to a million subscribers by the end of the year. Then perhaps he can review all 197 Motorola smartphones that will be released this year. Uh, I try, man. I really do try. But Motorola, they just keep spaffing them out faster than I can handle them. What I basically need to do is, uh, is with all of my fantastic YouTube money, I need to hire myself a Motorola GIMP. And then I can basically hand all of the Motorola smartphones off to him or her. Equal opportunities. And then they can do what needs to be done. Uh, so that's the dream. Maybe I'll get myself a mortal Gimp at some point. But yeah, grown the spurt and army to a million strong. That'll be pretty damn kick-ass. And thank you, thank you so much to everyone who's spread the word so far. Definitely that is the best way of supporting the channel uh, 100%. And thank you to everyone who left comments last week as well. 
big apologies for didn't get around to yours. So many comments, so many lovely comments as well. But please do bang them down below. Tell me your thoughts on whatever you fancy. And we've got just about enough time to have a quick check of the calendar for next week. And it looks like a fairly slimline one. It looks like the Mi 11 Global launch is scheduled to take place on Tuesday the 8th at midday UK time. So stay tuned for lots of hot content on that bad boy. Wink, wink. I hope to bring you a couple more bits of tech-related goodness. Then, of course, uh, this time next week, join me for another Techspert Weekly where we'll all cozy up have a drink and try and figure out if James is hiding in the wardrobe recording us all. So have yourselves a fantastic weekend, everyone, and I'll catch you next week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.